Are seeded dollars great investments? And I want to talk about an idea I have that the U.S. Mint could use that could help spark collecting some of these coins or at least something for the modern era. What I have here is the seeded dollar collection. It's a partial collection. Steve, who works for me, a friend of mine who was a customer for years, now he works part-time here at the coin shop, he wanted to share his seeded dollar collection that he's been putting together over the years. He's bought several of these for me, and I want to show you each of these coins, and we're going to talk about some things. So let's get started. So here are some of the seeded dollars. 1840, they started, and this is an 1841. It's a Philadelphia mint. The one thing that I've pointed out in other videos is that these are very low mintage coins. With this one being 173,000, but the survival rate is a lot lower. These coins circulated, they were large coins, and a lot of them got damaged and cleaned and messed with. So from 1841 to now, a lot of things happened to these coins. There's very few problem-free coins. So when you find a problem-free example, then it's going to be worth you know, basically the retail you see, sometimes even more. Now, one of the things that I was thinking about, and like I said, we're going to look at the rest of these too, is what happened in 1841. What was going on in 1841? So let's take a look. So I went to a website called On This Day, Historic Events in 1841. So first off, there's some interesting things that happened in 1841, and this leads me to the idea that I got in my head here, <laughs> and we'll talk about that. Just give me a second. So basically, James Clark, UK, is first to enter pack ice near Ross Ice Shelf. Something that's very notable is China cedes Hong Kong to British during the First Opium War. Hong Kong proclaimed the sovereign territory of Britain. There's coins out for that. A fire destroys two-thirds of uh, Puerto Rico. This, the, I don't know how to pronounce that. May I guess? Anyways, third Grand National, uh, it's uh, Horatio Powell wins aboard 14-1 Charity, first mayor to win the race. First continuous filibuster in U.S. Senate begin, or began and lasting until March 11th. U.S. Supreme Court rules to kidnap slaves from Spanish schooner. The Armistead are free. A method to alkali starch extracted and patented in the U.S. by Orlando Jones, which, which is later applied to corn starch. First U.S. steam fire engine tested in New York City. I mean, look at all these events. Cornerstone laid for Second Mormon Temple in uh, Nauvoo, Illinois. A New York Tribune begins publishing under editor Horace Greeley. A Bombay Gazette begins publishing on silk. I mean, it's just there's all kinds of things that happened in 1841, and you could do this with every single coin. Now, my idea. Okay. The U.S. Mint could re-release seeded dollars, okay, in silver, make them 90%, use the same uh, finish on the dies or same preparation for the dies, put them in holders, and then put the history of the year, what happened in that year, with the coin. People can learn by doing that. Then they can release clad versions or smaller silver versions or whatever it might be into circulation. Probably wouldn't do silver, but definitely clad versions of the seed of dollar. And they can mint them at the West Point Mint if they want to. It doesn't really matter. They can put preview marks on them, but put them in circulation and make it to where, you know, mint enough that it's worth it as far as they make a little bit of money on the dollar. So in other words, if it's a dollar coin, make it a $5 coin. It doesn't matter. Make a seated coin that they put out in circulation. That's my idea for the U.S. Mint. So anyways, I want to look at these coins. We get back to this. I think these coins are great investments. They're low mintage. The survival rate's low. So yes, I definitely think they are. But let's take a look at some more of these and some mintages and values. So I have my red book here, which I highly recommend buying a red book. We have 2024 red books up on the website. If you don't have one, you need to buy one. Got a good information in there on all this. So the 1842 is 184618 and, you know, these all are worth, you know, a few hundred dollars a piece. You can, in this condition especially, because you can see some of the Liberty on the Shield, it's hard to get them for less than $350 like that. 
Then we have uh, this one has a little uh, staining on it, 1843. And 1843 is a mintage 165,100. Some of these are a lot lower in mintage. Here's an 1846. And like I said before, when you are collecting coins, you collect what you like. And this is one of them that I like. I do like this. I, I Sometimes I wonder if I should have even sold any of my seated dollars. This is an 1859-0, oh, and it's obviously been clean, but it is very high grade. We're talking in the, the AU range. Now on the back here, we'll look at the reverse. You can see where the mint mark is. Very similar place that it is on a... Uh, Morgan dollar, just right above the one dollar. And I didn't use the whole word dollar. They have a period there and a DOL to signify that it's one dollar. So both of those, I'll show you here, is a 60 O as well. And mintages on those, let's go to the page here in the red book. You're looking at the 59 O is 360,000 and the 60 O is 515,000. So those are a little higher mintage than normal, but the, the, like I said, the survival rate of these. Then you have the 1861. Then you have over here an 1866, which you just purchased from me. Then an 1870. And an 1871. And an 1872. And then an 1873. The 1866 that I showed you has a mintage of only 48,900 and there is a no model version only two are known so that that's a pretty rare low mintage coin right there 1861 is also another low mintage coin at 77,500 now that you can see most of these are pretty much problem coins but that goes with collecting these I mean they're going to be problem coins if you want to complete a collection like this it's going to be very difficult to find them problem free but anyways, tell me what you think of my idea about the U.S. Mint re-releasing -re these and putting them in a little holder that has the history of the year and also maybe throwing some of these in circulation and letting people find them. Uh, just It doesn't have to be silver. Just It'd be something cool to find something like that. Instead of putting in you know uh, dollars that people don't want, let's put in some coins maybe that people would collect and a lower mintage, not, not millions. But at least so it makes some money. I mean, you don't, I mean obviously, you don't want to lose money. You don't want to wasteful spending that we already have as it is. So anyways, thanks for watching. Please share this video and have a great day.